So DynamoDB is extremely powerful, scalable and fast key value store, but it lacks aggregation. In this video, we design a use case that is very common for food delivery startups like Deliveroo and Swiggy that would require us to do real-time aggregations of DynamoDB data in an extremely cost-efficient way. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort-based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to Crickbus's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I have also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I am looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So DynamoDB is a low latency key value store offered by AWS. It supports operations like get, set, partial updates, delete and expiration. Right? But what it does not support is aggregation. So let's say we are building a food delivery app. For example, something like Swiggy, Zomato or Deliveroo. Right? And what do we need is we need a way, we need to show users some aggregated information. Let me take a concrete example. So let's say Deliveroo uh, does food delivery and it's quite popular in Europe. And what happens there is a restaurant owners can list their restaurants on their app. Users can browse through that, pick their favorite restaurants and order from it. Right? Very, very simple, uh, like extremely simple idea, but extremely useful and popular. And now on that app, what you can do is you can mark a particular restaurant as your favorite, right? And here, when you mark a restaurant as favorite, a lot of users are doing so, right? And to store this information in, let's say, DynamoDB, what you need is you need a partition key, right? So every DynamoDB table that you create has a partition key and an optional sort key. Now, if you'd want to register that if a user if a user favorited a particular restaurant or not, you would have a partition key that is combination of your restaurant ID and user ID, right? A combination of these two would become your partition key. You don't need a sort key for this particular use case, right? And you'd have additional attributes like created at and user ID so that you can query on it and see if this user has marked a particular restaurant as favorite or not. So if this key exists, which means that user like this restaurant is marked as favorite by a particular user. Right. Now, to get this information, so this schema that we just created works very well for our pointed queries. For example, that if I'd want to get if user U has restaurant R in its favorite or not, it's just a simple get. It's extremely simple key value lookup. Right. So given a key, which would be R underscore user, so restaurant underscore user. If I check for that, I'll get if a user has marked this restaurant as its favorite or not. Extremely simple order one. Right. Now, marking a favorite restaurant or unmarking are just pointed operations. So if you mark, if you mark as favorite or unmark is, so it just pointed get or pointed create or basically pointed delete. Right. All these operations are order one. But now let's say we want to show 
some aggregated information. Let's say on the application, we would want to render a list of restaurants that is ordered by the restaurants which are most favorite, which is favorited by most users. So for example, if one of the restaurant received 1000 favorites and other restaurant received 200, 300, 500. So I want this list to be ordered by the, the, the first restaurant should be the one that is most favorited by most users and then in descending order after that. Right? Now if you want to design this, because DynamoDB does not support aggregation, so we have to build our aggregation. So how do we do that? A simple way to do this is by using something called as a DynamoDB stream. So the core idea here is you typically have your API servers which is accepting the favorite or unfavorite actions. That API call is typically making pointed queries on this your your database, your DynamoDB table in which you are storing all the favorites that we just saw the schema for. Right. Now, up until here, everything's good, like pointed queries are solved. But now when we would want to show the aggregated count, so we would want to show that this restaurant, a particular restaurant are received N favorites, right? And we want to persist this. You cannot do this computation on runtime. You would have to store this pre-computed. So how do you build this? A way to build this is using DynamoDB stream. So what is a DynamoDB stream? Any insert, update, delete happening on the DynamoDB, this event is sent to a stream. And this stream is something like bin log or change log that we have heard of, right? So MySQL has bin log where all the commands that you fire on the database gets logged there. Similarly, all the events that happened on this DAPL will be sent to this particular stream. Now from this stream, we can invoke a Lambda function, entire serverless architecture. Right. So from this stream, a lambda function can consume. So all the events that happened on the table get streamed to the stream and it's consumed by this particular lambda. So every time an event comes in, this lambda function gets invoked. Right. And so on. So this loop would continue. What would this lambda function do? This lambda function will do this aggregation part. Right. So for example, for it might have, it might make an update in some table, some DynamoDB table in which you would have a restaurant ID and the total number of uh, favorites that it received, right? So every time something happens, uh, every time a new favorite is marked, insert happens basically over here, you're doing count plus plus, right? So this is the core idea. So from DynamoDB, you put out everything into DynamoDB and this is an implicit, it's just a couple of clicks on the AWS console. From DynamoDB, the events are configured and sent to DynamoDB stream from which you write a Lambda function to consume those events, right? So how do we store that? So let's say we create a new table and this table would be storing the aggregated favorites count. So for example, if I have, what I'd have is I'd want to store for each restaurant for a particular time window, what is my total, but what is my favorite count? Right? So restaurant ID becomes my partition key, time window becomes my sort key. Right? And then time window can contain all time, which means all time, how many favorites did a particular restaurant get? Or maybe you might want to do month wise, right? But you definitely want to do that all, all time thing so that you can render a global list. And then you may, if you'd want to query it, you can do that. So given that the partition for DynamoDB table, partition key and sort keys combination has to be unique. So you can do at a very granular level as well. For example, all time, one entry for all time, one entry for a particular month and one entry for a particular day, if you'd want to do that, right? So this would be our partition key, other thing like your time window would be the sort key, and then you would have a favorite count and updated that, right? And what were aggregation or what would your aggregator function would do is every time you receive a batch, right? So from DynamoDB, your Lambda function would receive a batch of events. From this batch of events, what would you do is you would first of all filter out and keep the only the events which are insert and remove. So whenever something and entry is created in the favorites table or entry is removed from the favorites table is what you will consume. Everything else is discarded. And then once you get that, you would be atomically incrementing or decrementing the count. Atomically is extremely important. So that is where in most cases you think, hey, let me just read the value, do a plus plus and then I'll set the value. 
this is not an atomic operation because there would be multiple concurrently executing lambda functions trying to act on that same restaurant object if let's say multiple people marking the same restaurant as favorite or not it might lead you to uh, it, it might lead to invoking of concurrent lambda functions acting on that same object problem right so that is where we have to find a solution so instead of using this we because we have to atomically update it instead of uh, invoking set we would be using add add is an operation in dynamo db that is atomic in nature and would do increment or decrement using it right second is we would be using dynamo db transactions to do that so in batch we would be getting multiple events let's say we filter out uh, the events that we are not interested in and we keep insert and remove events with us right and let's say we have compiled 100 such events now when you are updating in the table do use a dynamodb transaction to do that right so that it ensures that in case there is a failure your data does not become like does not go in an inconsistent state so dynamodb offers you transactions and you can use that to write to do batch updates of 100 writes at a time right but you would think hey this is great sounds simple but using lambda function to just do this small update won't it be costly like every time an update is happening every time an event is there and like we have to pick this up and lambda function needs to be invoked like isn't this costly you think it is here that's where ca the idea of capacity planning comes in if you think about it how many favorite events would come in it's not a social network where you are liking the post where it, it's very high write volume thing Imagine on your app, on your food delivery app, how likely are you to mark a restaurant as your favorite? Not much, not much. Is that so? That would be that would mean that there would be very fewer writes and deletes that would happen on the table. So on an average, what Deliveroo saw was seven thousand writes per day, and each execution of lambda function. So for every event, if you invoke a lambda function, it is just twenty five milliseconds it takes. So you will be built for twenty five milliseconds per execution. And the memory it requires is 64 MB, which is the bare minimum that you can allocate. And if you sum it up and check it for over a month, it turns out to be less than a dollar a month, which is nothing. Right? Imagine you would have to have a constant server running if you don't go via uh, serverless and you run this on separate set of machines, you would require so much money to run them. Why? That is where serverless comes at are rescue because this is not a high write throughput event it is very bursty in nature so you could save a lot of money by doing so right advantages of this architecture first of all is it's extremely cost efficient we just saw how much it would cost right just a dollar a month extra nothing more than that it is extremely cost efficient for a given user behavior right it you cannot just use it for social networks right you have to use it for use case where it makes sense here Marking some restaurant as favorite and removing it from favorite is not very common, right? It will be an obscure event. So that's why you can use serverless for that. Second, API response time remains unaffected given that our entire flow is asynchronous. You just saw how we write our API server writes like creates an entry or removes an entry from the DynamoDB, but our DynamoDB stream is unaffected. That is totally asynchronous behavior managed by AWS. So our API response time are not getting affected at all. And this is much better than traditional approaches. You might think, hey, instead of me adding this serverless layer onto that and like, let me just do a daily full scan. What, what could go wrong? So, for example, you go every day, you iterate through the entire favorites table, aggregate data in memory, and then you push it into this, uh, into this basically favorites aggregated table. That is very costly. Why? Because you are iterating on that entire table. It would cost you a huge amount of money on DynamoDB given the amount of restaurants you have, amount of events that you would be receiving that becomes costly. Plus, it is not real time also. Why? Because what's happening over here is, let's say you're running a daily full scan, which means for your data to get updated, you have to wait for an entire day. That is not expected. Like you'd want to give a much closer near real time user experience. Second, you may think, hey, instead of me doing it once every day, what if we do a synchronous update? So my API itself would update at two places. One in your favorites table. Second, in your favorites aggregated table. That sounds doable. That sounds good. 
but your API response time would shoot up because now instead of doing one write, it has to do two writes, right? So that would become slower. So given that, given the constraints that we were playing with, given the kind of system that we are designing, given the kind of capacity we are going to handle, serverless is a very good choice over here. So in case you are fine, you find yourself using DynamoDB and you want this kind of aggregation, do a basic capacity planning and see if you need constantly running servers or you can go via serverless, right? Using DynamoDB streams and Lambda functions, right? I hope and basically that is what I wanted to cover. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it amusing. That is it for this one. Uh, if you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post two in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Atan.